We now turn to present a series of image processing applications where Sparseland is deployed. Note that we will not provide details about the problem solved nor the algorithms used and simply focus on the results obtained. This image has been taken by Gemini, a space probe serving astronomy research. This image shows a specific galaxy and clearly it is contaminated by both structured and random noise. In an attempt to clean this image, we applied a cartoon texture separation procedure leading to these results. The sum of the three images shown lead to the given original image. In this separation, the cartoon part gives the clear view of the galaxy, the texture part captures all the structured noise, and the remaining content is the additive random noise. Sparseland was used here to achieve this separation and the dictionaries involved rely on Wavelet and DCT. These results are the fruits of a collaboration with David Donahoe and John Luke Stark. Surprisingly, by a simple modification to the above separation algorithm, we can solve an in-painting problem, filling in the holes in a given image. Here are the results obtained, and clearly there is no trace of scratches in the given image. One of the most important tasks in image processing is denoising, removal of additive Gaussian noise from an image while preserving its content. We see here the original image and its noisy version. An algorithm we developed in 2006 together with Michal Aaron suggested cleaning the image by operating on small overlapping patches, projecting each of them to the Spartan model. A central idea in this work was to learn the dictionary from the corrupted patches directly, starting with the well-known DCT and iterating in order to get a dictionary that is tailored to the content of the image we operate on. As you can see, the resulting dictionary contains atoms that capture the unique textures that appear in our image. This algorithm and later variations of it led to state-of-the-art results. While the previous result referred to black and white images, a follow-up work with Guillermo Sapiro and Julian Meral treated color images. The beauty in this work is the fact that Color has been absorbed by the dictionary of the model, relieving us from the need to define the relation between the color layers. The results obtained are superb. Observe that here and elsewhere, we start from a clean image, contaminate it, and then try to recover it back. This path enables us to quantify how close we get to the original image. These results were obtained in a joint work with Raja Jiris for the problem of Poisson denoising. The noisy images in this case are captured by very low counts of photons, a situation corresponding to low-light photography. This is a much more challenging inverse problem, and as can be seen, surprisingly good results emerge. Image deblurring is another fundamental problem in image processing. In this task, we are given a blurry and noisy image. We know the blur kernel, and our goal is to stably invert the degradation effect. An iterative algorithm is used here, initialized with a zero image. After a few iterations, the result is getting very clear and very sharp. These results were obtained in a joint work with Boaz Matalon and Michael Tsibulevsky. A blind deblurring is a far more challenging task since it assumes no knowledge of the blur kernel. In a joint work with Wenze Shao, these are the results we obtain using the Sparseland model. In the bottom right of the results, the estimated kernels are shown. We return to in-painting, but this time using learned dictionaries. The image shown here lost 80% of its content in random locations. We train the dictionary on the available pixels in this corrupted image, and the result is near perfect. Running the very same algorithm on this problem, where the red pixels are defined as missing, again we get a near-perfect recovery. Here is another such example. All these are results obtained in a joint work with Julian Mayral and Guillermo Sapiro. We move to a very different problem of image compression, done with Oribrit. Our goal in this project is to deeply compress frontal fascial images while preserving their content. Let's see what regular JPEG provides for a budget of 550 bytes. The values shown in red are the root mean squared error per pixel. JPEG 2000 performs better, but the faces are still quite distorted. 
And here is what sparseland with learned dictionaries could provide. Clearly, these results are far better and in fact, near perfect. Moving to a lower budget of 400 bytes, JPEG cannot achieve the desired compression. JPEG 2000 gives washed out faces and the sparsity-based solution seems to operate very well, resulting in high quality face images. Another inverse problem of great interest is single image super resolution, where we are given a low quality image and our goal is to increase its resolution. Bicubic interpolation is a simple way to address this need, but as can be seen, the results are not really good and the text is hardly readable. The super resolution algorithm based on sparse land lead to a higher quality outcome with text that is readable. This result is part of the work done with Matan Porter and Roman Zaide. The same algorithm applied on a different image leads to these results. What we see here are two portions from a bigger image taken from the original, the bicubic interpolation, and the sparseland result. Observe how the bicubic interpolation leads to aliasing effect, clearly seen over the uh, dominant edges. The super-resolved solution is sharper and free of these artifacts. It is time to wrap up. We discussed the importance of models for handling various tasks in signal and image processing and offered a model relying on sparse and redundant representations. We have shown how this model can be used to a series of tasks leading to amazing results. Note that we have not explained how the model is used to achieve these results. This, along with the theoretical foundations of the model, will be thoroughly described in this course.